Urban Explorer of Reddit, what was your I bet a good foe story? I was exploring an old storm water filtration plant once. The lower levels of the main buildings were all flooded, which was super creepy, and it was pretty overgrown. This was my second time there, and I wanted to see more than I had last time. A friend of mine, and I had the bright idea, to climb into one of the pipes, that had an open manhole cover really stupid for a whole bunch of reasons. We figured we knew, had a pretty good guess, where it would come out as there was another manhole on the other side of the compound in line with where the pipe was heading. When we got all the way there though, it turned out to be welded shut. The worst bit was, when we turned to go back we realized we'd been slowly going downhill. The pipe was fairly slimy, and it seemed for a minute, like we wouldn't be able to go back the way we'd come I've never quite felt that level of claustrophobia before or since. As a teen I used to break into an old aluminum factory a lot led who was with me at the the time up a staircase winding around pill shaped vats with small flap lids for flights up we start seeing feathers, then a dead bird, then a pile of dead birds, with no open ceiling where they cold flown in, we turn around, and he stops me, says he saw some dust fall, and we notice the lid on the vat next to us is open there were no noises aside from us which was somehow comforting, still never went back after that. Not terribly urban, back when I lived in the rural south, but my friend and I went to an abandoned trailer, because she wanted to show me all the old playboys, that were left lying around in it. There were pentagrams painted on the front door, and on one wall of the bedroom, that was through the kitchen, but that wasn't too spooky. My brother was one of those edgy teenagers, and I had seen more than enough crookedly spray painted pentagrams, to know it was just idiots goofing off. Nap, nah, the scary part was the half-dead cat hung by its back legs from the ceiling fan in the back room down the hall. We went to take it down, so we could call the cops, and then hopefully get to bury it at her house, and give it some peace. And then it woke up and started squalling. It scratched me on my arms and her on the face, and tried to get away, but it was so weak all it could do was stagger. We eventually got it wrapped in my shirt, and walked home to explain to her mom where we were, and how it happened. That crotchety old cat lived like another 6 years with no teeth, dislocated back legs, fixed by the vet of course, but the cat still limped forever, and horrible cataracts. When me and my friends were young, we lived in a trailer park community in a bad part of Phoenix, but we loved exploring anyway, we found a large old storm drain behind our community covered in graffiti and weeds and we decided to explore, walking in with mini flashlights we kept seeing spots of blood and more strange graffiti, after about 30 ish minutes we started hearing tapping, we got scared and started to walk back out. When we noticed it seemed to be following us, we ran like our lives depended on it. A few weeks after, that our community manager discovered a body near the entrance of the storm drain. That was the last of our exploring. I convinced a group of about 5 or so of my friends, to go with me into this old house, that was in an odd sort of industrial area, like on one of those service roads next to a highway. The only way in was to go through the basement, and through a hole in the wall at the top of the stairs. After exploring for a while I thought I'd do a scout mission for fun, that involved me just walking around the house to check for cops. Well what do you know, there were cop cars just pulling into the street with sirens on that were pulling into the restaurant next door, someone probably reported us. The exit was on the other side of the house from the cops, I quickly called up to the others to climb back out, and we somehow managed. I don't generally believe in intuition, but I do find it odd, that I had the urge to do a sweep, right when the cops showed up. No really scary ones other than random bums yelling and stuff, but there were a couple of good encounters, messing around in the outskirts of a train yard taking pics of old train cars and stuff ran into I guess a mechanic or maintenance worker or something who ended up being super cool, and started up, and pulled a locomotive out of the shed for us. In an old, abandoned mining site somewhere I came around the side of a big machine thing and ran into a homeless dude living in a tent. He also turned out to be cool, we gave him some of our food and sat around for a while talking. In a building I found the basement. Then the sub-basement. It was dark. Heard a sound. Then an animal running sound and dogs barking. I fucking booked it back up the stairs and closed the fire door and foe. Speaking to some urbex mentors they explained, if you hear dogs or see them, to not go in the area as it's probably used for a drug lab. 
Spooky cement tunnel that seems to lead underground. Very dark and echoes go on for ages. We had no clue what it was, didn't seem to be any kind of drainage tunnel, because it was square slash bone dry, and out in an open field. There are definitely some old bomb shelters and missile silos on our area, that are out of commission, so we decided to take a look. Only about 20 yards in, and the light from outside starts really fading behind us. Someone takes out a flashlight, and we start seeing bare human footprints on the ground leading deeper into the dark. None leaving. We skedaddled. I was inside an abandoned brewery, looking at the old equipment. I climbed a lot of stairs, and found a door with scribbles of graffiti on it, among them the sentences backquote don't look down, and backquote commit suicide here we were about 4 stories off the ground at this point, but my curiosity was killing me. I opened the door nothing. No stairs or balcony or fence. The door was on the wall of the building, and opened into thin air, and you absolutely would have been killed, painfully, had you fallen out. I work in a production facility for a variety of beverages, we have several doors like this for forklift access. The upper floors need to be stocked with various supplies, and also trash removed, it's a lot easier to do with a forklift and a few pallets, rather than some poor labor worker busting their ass up and down stairs packing it manually. The building you were in being older probably lacked all the new safety protocols as our facility now has dual moving swing gates as well as auto latching auto shutting doors. It's still scary to be around when loading slash unloading, but there'll never be a chance for anyone to accidentally open the door and step out into nothing. Went exploring in an old textile mill in rural Alabama. It was easy enough to hide your car for parking, and you could even pull your car onto the site, if you had four wheel drive. We went often, and one time parked right in the middle of the mill's back lot, and decided to climb the ladders to the roof. Once we got to the roof the sun started setting, so we got our headlamps ready, watched the sunset, then decided to head back down from the roof. As we are walking to the ladder my car alarm down below starts going off, and immediately from the rooftop across from us someone flashed a flashlight at us, but they never said a thing. I was way too nervous about my car, being stolen to really care about the other person, but they didn't chase us, yell, nothing, they just kept their light on us so that we could never see them, and followed us with their light till we got into the car and left. I never went back after that. It's torn down now. Little bit late here, but I once went exploring with my brother on an old, abandoned naval base at midnight. We snuck into the officer's quarters, and were just exploring, when we heard a weird noise. We are both into photography, so I decided to take a flash photo, and see if I caught anything weird in the light. The camera went off, and we both saw a massive, 6 feet long bees nest on the side of one of the walls. I think our presence has just disturbed them, because hundreds of them were already crawling in the outside of the nest. It was the single most scariest thing I've ever seen, and it was gone in a second, because of the camera flash. We noped the fuck out of there right as a cop was pulling up, to see what we were up to lol. Edit, just dug through my old laptop for a couple hours to try, and find the pictures. They are not very clear, but I think this is a portion of the nest. Less back quote urban, but sharing anyway I was camping in BC with my GF at the time and her dog, had a couple of rough looking people who were the only other people in the area we were camping, but it was late, so we set up, and thought nothing of it. Guy wanders over while we are in our tent can hear him outside, and dog is barking at this point. I get out, and ask what he's doing, and he says he just wanted to pet the dog, this is at like midnight. Told him we were settling in etc, guy wanders off without replying at all to what I'd said. Woke up the next morning to what looked to me like a single 9mm bullet sitting upright on our sights. Picnic table, and a happy face made with sticks and rocks on the bench part of the table below it. Maybe it was just a shitty joke, but we sure as fuck didn't stay around to find out. There was an abandoned house down the road from my high school that was still filled with stuff. Some friends and I would hang out in there from time to time. There was a point where the house got boarded up and we didn't go into it for a while. Jumped to a few months later and one of my friends told me he found a way inside. After a couple more weeks I went to the house with one friend to check it out again, and relive some memories. When we got there, it was clear something bad had taken place. 
The stuff in the house was thrown all over the place. Any kind of dish from the kitchen was smashed on the floor. When we looked at the stairs to the second floor we both got the worst feeling. Like we would find something terrible if we went up there. So we got the hell out of there. After a couple more months, the house was demolished. An old primary school that I was at for a few years before a new one opened. Me and a few friends had been before but never actually went into the place as one of us was worried. One day I decided to go in by myself to see it. The only way in was a very small window that was almost impossible to see through as the hallway was so dark. I brought a flashlight and went into the place. I was worried because I started hearing what sounded like footsteps coming from the old lunch hall. I saw an outline of what seemed like another person and a flashlight pointed at me. The person shouted hey at me and that's probably the fastest I've ever ran as a 10 year old lol. The story makes me laugh a lot now, but for weeks I was terrified and curious at the same time. The place has since been fully boarded up for too many people clearly going into the place. Not urban, but in Virginia, when I first started to hike me, and my buddy went hiking, and walked too far, and ended up off trail, and walked for a while thinking it's the long way back, the map showed it did loop. Ended thinking let's ask someone, and saw a shack off the trail. As we got closer saw a Nazi flag from outside the window. Given I'm brown and my buddy was Asian, we figured now. My friends and I explored an abandoned grain factory in Johnson City TN. It's been torn down now, but it was massive. Stories upon stories. It was like 11pm and pitch black in there, and we had crappy little flashlights. We were getting this horrible smell, like death, but kept exploring like dumbasses. We went all the way to the top floor, and discovered it was a, currently, empty heroin den, complete with spoons and shit. Definitely scrammed at that point. Sort of urban exploring I guess. When I was at Chicago they were renovating some of the Green Line stations and a friend and I would jump the turnstiles at the station across from our building at night to get high and watch the trains. Day 2 of the station being closed and one of the conductors saw us and actually stopped. So we got on with only one other person in the car thinking it'd be fun to just ride it until it came back. It's pretty late, and after a few minutes we realize the homeless looking guy sitting at the other end of the car isn't actually masturbating, he's cleaning a gun. Got off only to realize it was an Ashland slash 63rd bound train, and had no idea where tf we were. To this day neither of us remember how we made it home. Only now writing this do I realize we had no way of getting back, since they wouldn't have stopped at our station again. When I was a teenager some friends and I would occasionally party in the disused biology department of the local university. Would get in through a hole one of us cut in this barbed wire fence surrounding the building. Maybe the fourth or fifth time hanging out there a few of us are exploring. And find a lab that still got like beakers and vials in it. And there's this biggest walk-in freezer type door in the back with plastic tape over it. Sort of like crime scene tape. Being the young imbeciles we were, we tore the tape off and opened the door. It was definitely some kind of storage area, with shelves full of jars of weird liquids and powders, and the ground was covered in broken glass from a jar that had fallen and shattered, releasing this red powdery substance that was coating everything. We realized it probably was hazardous to our health, went back to the main group and we all left and never went back. I still have no idea what the stuff was, it could have been harmless, but I'm also glad we were sober enough not to like try tasting it or something stupid like that. I was exploring the abandoned hospital at night, when I see a light shining down the corridor just on my left. When I saw that I started to run back, when I hear the loudest most distorted laughter ever. Then I heard a man screaming then the sound of something breaking. I learned a few days later that it was my friend who knew I was going to be there alone, and he wanted to scare me. The screaming man was actually coming from the it video on the SCP bone breaker. Not urban but I was driving down a country road once north of Puto Vallarta and looked down the road to the left. There was a lightly wooded area with maybe a hundred people having a family type gathering. Spread around the trees and on the road were many hard looking guys in black uniforms and automatic looking rifles. We just kept going. The cartels need downtime too I guess. My sister was exploring an abandoned mental institution near where we live and she found a basement with no graffiti or anything. 
the place hadn't been used for decades, so finding a place without a dick sprayed on every surface was enough of a creepy horror movie moment for her to dip. Most of the time it's cops or security, but there was one time it was something else. My friend and I were exploring an abandoned insane asylum. We were in the underground tunnels that stretched as far as our flashlights could shine. The echoing is unreal down there, so we would stop every 30 feet or so to let the echoes die down, so we knew we were alone. The one time we stopped the echoes died down, and then we heard what sounded like an elevator coming to the ground floor. There were no elevators in the building, and no power anyway. We looked at each other and bailed. No idea what it was to this day. I was in an abandoned insane asylum, and crawled in a window on the second story, to let my friends in downstairs. The building was huge, and so I was having a hard time finding the stairwells. I saw a flash of light at the end of a really long hallway, and so assumed my friends had gotten in somehow and so started running that way. I ran down past 20 plus open doors, to get to the end only to find a mirror that my light had reflected off of, and a dead end hall. Felt eerily alone, and knew I had to go back alone past all those rooms I had sprinted past. Definitely felt trapped, and like I needed to get foe. I was walking back home, and took a short break, to lean on a corner of a grocery store. Kind of a sketchy area of Queens, nigh, but I felt safe walking with a few friends. The parking lot entrance was along the edge we were leaning on. All of a sudden, a totally blacked out fancy sedan pulls into the entrance, but stops right in front of us. At the same moment, a tall man in a suit came walking from around the corner, basically behind us, and gives us all a terrifying look, like we need to leave. As the man opens the back door to get in, the passenger side window opens, and we see the face of two oldish men staring at us with a chilling look. Without missing a beat or even looking at each other, we quickly stood straight and rushed away. We fast walked away, and said nothing, until we got to the next block. We have no idea what we saw, but I don't think we were supposed to. The coldness felt from the stairs we got were unlike anything I've experienced. Never had a true run-in. Your mind definitely plays tricks on you, especially when you are alone in an abandoned building you are not supposed to be in. There was a brick factory that was recently marked for demo in my area and thought it would be easy pickings. Snuck in, no fencing, didn't need to break anything to get in. Took some photos of the damaged equipment, some graffiti tags on the walls, all good fun. Was about 30 minutes in, before I started hearing footsteps pitter patter around. The building echoed, like crazy so any step you took potentially made such noticeable sounds, it would allow the unknown figure I kept hearing zero in, and you could hear the steps get closer. I eventually rolled out of a window, after locking myself inside an office room for a full 5 minutes of hushed breathing was confident it was a homeless man trying to kill me. Heard him talking quietly at one point, couldn't make out what he was saying, but was the scariest 10 seconds of my life as he walked past. It was a cop, saw the car on the way out. Luckily didn't get grabbed. It's never a monster, it's always cops. Was exploring the basement of this really cool old Victorian mansion, came across a kind of alarmingly large den of snakes. I doubt they were anything dangerous, but they started looking at me and slithering around, so I politely apologized for invading their home and noped the fuck out of there. We were 17 yo dumbass girls and decided to climb into the first story window of the abandoned psychiatric facility in our city. My friend was a former cheerleader and lifted me up to the window and I climbed in with the intention of securing a rope for her to use to climb. Within my cursory glance to find something stable, I found evidence of squatters, drug use, something that looked like dried blood and a very very dead rat stabbed into the old desk in the room. Heard someone in the distance whispering too, and realized I was unarmed and scrawny and alone and stupid. Promptly leapt back out the window, jammed both my ankles on landing, and we hightailed it out of there. And that was the end of urban exploring. My bill is an avid ghost hunter, and knowing I liked urban exploring he brought me along to this place in Maryland. To enter we had to crawl into this tunnel which looked like a hole in the rock. When we shimmied through the hole opened up into this stone ruin. It was like a cellar with two rooms. Cave bugs with long whip-like protrusions crawled all over the walls. Everything was moist and damp. 
when we crossed from one room into the second, I turned around and there was an axe leaning against the wall next to the doorway. There was a bedroll and a half-eaten hunk of cooked meat just laying on the stone, like someone was interrupted mid-meal and left. Now I have hearing damage and have had trouble hearing since I was a baby. When we left, my bill grabbed the axe very casually and we just left. As we were walking, pitch black at night, I heard very clearly the snap of twigs behind me. I couldn't see anything but I told my bill I thought we were being followed. Without turning around he said, yep, for a while. Nothing ever happened. We got back to our cars and left, but I noped out of ever exploring again. That was in 2009. I've never gone again since. Me and my friend were going to explore a large farmland that was private property. We were about to enter a large paddock until I saw a large sign saying something along the lines of beware bull. My friend wanted to do it by I backed out and convinced him to do the same glad I did cause. After seeing what a bull can do we would be lucky to escape one. 